I have my timer, <laughs> so I don't run over time. Come on, behave. That's it. Right. I'm just going to take on a short journey of what's happened in this past three years, and it's quite, uh, as we look back, it's quite amazing. So the journey so far, back three years ago, our average meeting was 15 to 20, uh, meeting in person, and we had a low retention rate. There weren't a lot of people hanging around for the next meeting, next meeting. They'd come to one, disappear. Okay? So that was what was happening um, three years ago. Then in 2020, online meetings with COVID, same deal. Uh, again, low retention, people would drop in, drop out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was it was not what I'd call going anywhere. In 2021. Stefan expanded the leadership group. As a result of that expansion, we refined the vision and began changing the format of the meeting to what it is now, okay? which has proven quite successful. And as a result of that, we're now in a position to look forwards. Where are we going? So 2022, a number of things happened. The first one was we in started what we call the Jericho Prayer Walks. I'd encourage all of you to go and study Joshua. Because we are in a spiritual battle and the first six chapters of jo Joshua go through how to wage war spiritually. <clears throat> it's a defined battle plan. And I'll say to you now, if you're in street ministry or ministry where you're evangelizing, if you do not follow this battle plan, your results will be lesser. Because there is, it is a set way of battling, spiritually. Okay? So we began following that. And there was myself, Stefan, JJ, and our late great mate, Peter Muller. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'd have five, most times we had three or four. But once a month, we would get up, top of our hill on the hill, a little park there, and we would pray over this region. But we, would, we didn't stand there with eloquent prayers. It was silent prayer because we were following the Jericho principle. So we saw in our hearts what we wanted, what God had on our hearts. We felt it. We prayed with our spirit because we didn't want the enemy knowing exactly what we were seeing. Okay? As a result, we started seeing stuff. People started turning up and staying. And then we changed the meeting format so that we could encourage people to network in ministry and in business, because they, they go together, okay? God's business is ministry. My business is dedicated to God. It's a ministry, simple as that, okay? Our average meeting this year has been 40. Today we have 10 apologies. You know how much that warms my heart because people cared enough to let us know that they wanted to come, couldn't get here, but they will be back next year. Okay? They didn't abdicate. They have cared. That means a heck of a lot. More attendees invited others. It was no longer just one or two people inviting. We had more people inviting others, bringing along. A lot of you in this room right now are in that category. Higher attention rate. So, what are the opportunities ahead? I'll tell you something now, if you decide to go to bed at night and start praying, it could be a very, very early morning. A couple of months ago, I was laying in bed praying. Now, in fact, six weeks ago, I was laying in bed praying. It's about 11 o'clock at night, and I saw 2 a.m. before I got to sleep, because God was showing me stuff. And he basically said to me, I want you to look up a couple of things. I want you to look up the tooth, uh, I want you to look up the 1911 census. I want you to look up the 2021 census. 
and a percentage of Christians in the population. I went, okay. So next morning, that's what I did. Okay. So here's, here's the 1911 census. Australia's population, about four and a half million. The number of people who said they are of Christian faith, 95% of that. The missionaries in Australia had done a stunning job, plus we had many people coming from the in England mm -hmm. and Ireland. Yeah. So a lot of Catholic, a lot of Anglican, Presbyterian, blah, 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 okay? So things were going well. People who did not profess to be Christian, obviously 95%, if my math is correct, I hope it is, all right? So what happened? Then, well, the opportunity was that basically 95% of people were supposed to be evangelizing 5%. For every 100 people you talk to, only five were open. I mean, this is general, okay? This is not, okay? But it'd be like, can I share? Oh, you're already in. Can I share? Oh, you're already in. Oh, you're already in. <laughs> Who's not in? Okay? I don't know, you know, that, that, that's frustration. So there's some consequences, some things that happen after that. So market saturation. What happens when a business, and we're all in God's business, what happens when a business reaches saturation or approaches it? Gets lazy. Changes its vision from its core, what it's supposed to do. You can see the little graph on the left there heads downwards. It looks to overseas opportunities. It finds other ways to be relevant. And you see a parallel with our church today. Look at the building. <laughs> but see, that's what God wanted me to see. He said, you need to see why the churches are not out there in the marketplace. Yeah. Because to be relevant back in a hundred years ago, it was about tending to the flock. It was about finding other ways to be relevant because we were approaching market saturation. Hmm. Let's look at 2021. <clears throat> half, five and a half million people, it's probably 26 at the moment. Okay. 43.9% are Christian. And I've heard people going, oh, the church attendances are falling, blah, 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 blah. Actually, the numbers are not falling a huge amount. What's happened is our population has increased due to the white Australia policy being scrapped back in the 60s. So we've welcomed people from many, many other cultures and nations into this country many of them non-Christian, many, many, many. Plus, Australia, for since the Second World War, has not been under any form of persecution. <laughs> what happens in countries where people are persecuted? They turn to God. In countries where there's no persecution, they leave God because I'm fine. Except we've just seen what happens with fear and what happens when fear-based media mm. and fear-based government goes to work. Mm. We're now entering some sort of persecution. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see things a bit differently. Okay? Our opportunity now is at least out of every 156 should be open to what we have to say. It's a huge opportunity. It is huge. Well, I've, I've got ahead of myself. I'm going to be excited. Just a few. I don't know how many people are actually out there in the marketplace now trying to evangelise to you. I think the number is very small. Yeah. Incredibly small. So we have just a few trying to evangelise well over 14 million. I'd suggest that's more like 18. Yeah. Okay. Maybe even more. We don't know how many are backslidden, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, for every, you know, you can see it up there. The opportunity. So it is huge and growing. Yeah. So I'm not worried about the numbers of church declining. To be honest with you, what I'm worried about 
is the number of people actually out there doing the thing, right. following the Great Commission. That's what I look at. Why aren't people doing that? Well, let's go back 100 years ago. Saturation. And I hope I do not offend you. But the churches haven't changed. They are pastoring, etc., etc. That's fine. I was incredibly fortunate when I was discipled. I was discipled to evangelize. I was not discipled to be a little good Christian sitting in a church. I was told, get out there. The message was hugely clear. That's the message for us all. So, it's very interesting what's happening out there, and I hope what God showed me, you can now have a, get a glimpse of. So, FGBA, our purpose, serve the Great Commission. It's as simple and as huge as that. It's not anything else. We are not a church. I see our job is to get out there and evangelize, and uh, there's some amazing, simple ways of doing that, which we're gonna help and equip people in this next 12 months. Okay, it is what God has shown me over this past 10 years in how that can happen is, is, is amazing. Okay, it, uh, it blows my mind. That's it, it's simple. We believe that. With a heart that asks, Lord, how do I best serve you in the Great Commission? And with the opportunity, this huge opportunity before us, millions will accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. This country needs it. Yeah. Absolutely needs it. It's all from Matthew. Our vision. This scares the heck out of me. This is a vision God laid on me about a month ago. Another 2 a.m. morning. One million, sorry. One million spiritual warriors serving the Great Commission Australia, harvesting, harvesting the plenty of the crop for Jesus. What does Jesus say? The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Our job is to find the workers. Our job is to equip those workers. So this is where we want to go. Now, I have no idea how long that might take, but I do know one thing. I can't do it. You can't do it. No human can do that. Only God can achieve that. And the glory will be all His. Right. So. Impossible. Not for God. For you and I? Yep. Because none of us are that good. But God is amazing. He will make that happen. If we're prepared to serve. Questions for you. Will you become a leader of some sort? Now there are leaders in many, many ways. In many ways. Some are entrepreneurial leaders, some are management leaders, some are teaching leaders. You know the spiritual gifts. You've got spiritual gifts. How can you lead in that area? Will you help multiply chapters to get to that one million? Will you help equip people to get to that one million? 2023 is our next step towards that. We will be launching some programs. We will be starting to equip people. What I would like everyone in this room to do and everyone who eventually gets this video is when we start next year, bring people. Bring people to here. Let us work with them to create that. Will you? See, it only takes one small flame to light a wildfire. Will you join us and with God's guidance and grace fuel the fire towards a million spiritual warriors growing God's kingdom? 
As JJ's pointed out, Stefan has done an amazing job over this past eight years, and Rodney over there before him. These people have held this together. Well, now it's our turn. Let's take this thing and do that. Jojo? 